Ooga chaka, ooga ooga, 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 ooga chaka. Kinda gonna suck. First of all, I'd like to apologize in advance. Um, I'm not feeling all that well, so if it's a little difficult to understand, I know it's already a little difficult to understand me when I'm speaking through the mask, but um, I got a sore throat and uh, a runny nose. I think I caught a cold today. So um, apologies in advance if you can't understand what I'm saying. Um, that being said, so yeah, I'm gonna go see Gardens of the Galaxy today, and um, honestly, this is probably one my one of my most anticipated movies of the year. Um, the first one was just so great. Um, I don't often see a movie in the theaters more than once. Um, the Emperor's New Groove I saw three times in theaters. Um, Deadpool, the Deadpool movie, I saw I think four times in theaters. I saw Gardens of the Galaxy in theaters five times. No, six times. Six times in theaters. Um, and that just goes to show how great of a movie it was. Um, the first Gardens of the Galaxy was, hands down, is, in my opinion, one of the best uh, movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It was just so fun. It was so irrelevant, but it was it kind of knew it was irre irrelevant. It didn't take itself too seriously, but at the same time, it like it it knew to have fun. It uh it had heart. That's one of the things I really like about the first film was that it had heart. It knew it actually was one of the, probably the most saddest of the Marvel movies to date. Um, I remember when I was when I first went to go see it. I took my mom to go see it, and it got to the very opening of the 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 movie when Peter Quill's mom dies of cancer. She just turned to me and said, "You did not tell me I was going to cry during this film." And yeah, like you wouldn't expect that kind of emotion to come from a movie with a tree and a talking raccoon, because it's a sequel. It. it I get the feeling like they would be more, um, they'd be more likely to kind of just embrace its irrelevance, embrace its kind of goofy, off-the-wall nature, and by doing so, they'd kind of forget that kind of heart and soul that made the first one so good. So yeah, I'm kind of worried that that will be one of the things that this film does. I'm kind of worried that it, it'll just kind of be too irrelevant, too silly, too goofy. That's really what this film, that's this film's biggest hurdle, is that I want it to, as I want it to be everything that made the first film great, with just a little bit more, because it's a sequel, you obviously need a little bit more, um, you need a little, you need to up the ante in a sense, and I hopefully, hopefully they do that, hopefully they kind of take it, they take everything that made the first film great and step it up a little bit. Make it a, a little bit bigger. Make it a little bit more grander. Uh, have more dark emotional scenes. But also, like, balance it out with the fun irrelevance. Because, again, this is a movie with a tree and a talking raccoon. You can't take that too seriously. So, yeah, that's my thoughts going into Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 2. Hopefully it's good. Fingers crossed. Um, I'll see you guys when I get out. Ciao. All you do is yell at each other. You are not friends. No, we're family. Except maybe her. Whew, boy. Um... Is it possible to be healed by the magic of a good movie? Cause if, cause I'm feeling a lot better now after watching that. That was awesome. What can I say about it? It, it was, it was every bit the sequel that I really, really wanted to see. I know there's a lot of uh, people out there right now saying that it's not as good as the original, and I can kind of see that. It's there is certain parts of the film that I didn't think were as good as the first movie. But then again, there were some some parts of the film that I thought were even better than the first movie. Um, the pacing in this movie feels a lot better. Um, I rewatched the first movie recently, and in in preparation for this, 
And the one thing that I noticed about the first film is that it kind of starts off very, um, very exposition heavy. It's always just like, bam, we're at this planet, and then bam, we're at this planet, and then bam, we're here, then bam, we're there, and we're cutting all over the place. It's, it's a very, very heavy first act, and it, and... When the film does eventually slow down, you feel kind of exhausted because the film's just been like, go, 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 go. And then it finally like slows into a more subtle pace. And it was a little jarring in the first one. This one doesn't have that problem. The, the pacing in this film is much, much better. It, it feels very consistent from beginning to end. It didn't, it never, no scenes felt rushed. No scenes felt like they're, they could have been longer. It was just that right amount of perfect um, pacing and perfect uh, um, uh, movement. Uh, flow, I guess the best term would be for it. It had the right amount of flow. The one thing that I actually thought that was also better in uh, this film than in the first one was the style of humor. The first film is funny, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, a, it's a hilarious film. But this film, its humor is... It's, it takes the shotgun approach of humor. It's just kind of... Bam, there's a joke. Bam, there's a joke. Bam, there's a joke. Bam, there's a joke. And 99% of them are bullseyes. The entire time watching this film, this is basically like what I was like. First of all, I had this big dopey smile on my face the entire time of the film. But from beginning to end of this film, I was basically like this. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, 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 oh that's funny. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. Oh! From beginning to end, I could not stop laughing at this film. This film is easily one of the funniest movies to have probably come out of this year so far. And maybe even will be the funniest movie this year. Right from the beginning of this film, I knew exactly that this film was going to be uh, a, definitely a worthy sequel of the first movie. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The, the opening scene of this film is hands down one of the best ways to open a sequel like Gardens of the Galaxy. Because in the first one, the, the opening scene of the movie is Peter Quill dancing to um, Come and Get Your Love by Redbone. Which is funny, and it's a great scene. It's, 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 it's one of the best parts of that movie. This one does exactly what a sequel should do. It takes that scene, plays on it, but ups the ante. So this time, it's actually Groot doing the dancing. It's to a different song, and there's an entire battle in the background. That is awesome. I loved it. I loved it. And I kind of hope that they... Oh, excuse me. Again, I'm, I'm still getting over the thing. I kind of hope that they go that route with every film. That would be kind of cool if the third movie also opens up with a dance scene but from a different character. That would be a nice recurring theme, or a recurring thing to have in every single film. Also, let's talk about some of the, uh, the direction of this film. Um, first of all, it's exactly like the first one. So if you really liked the look and feel of the first one, which I did, you're gonna love this one. Because James Gunn is one of the few people who really gets that you can be gritty and you can be dark but you can also be colorful. And I really love the, the, the use of color in this film. This is a beautiful film to look at. Beautiful from beginning to end. It's just beautiful. The colors are just popping. And, and, and even though like there's some really dark and depressing and somewhat kind of uh, emotional scenes happening throughout this film, it's, it looks so beautiful. It's just, oh, uh, uh, whoever did the cinematography on these films, you need a raise, because you, beautiful, love it. Mwah. Mm. One of the things I was worried about with this film was if, I kind of got the feeling that not every character would get a focus, because not only are we do we have the original crew of the Guardians of the Galaxy, but we're also bringing back Nebula, we're bringing back Yondu, we're introducing two new characters, um, 
that's a lot of characters to juggle. But James Gunn does it. Every character has a, a, a emotional lesson that they learn throughout the film. Peter Quill is learning how to, uh, he's kind of learning his origin, where he comes from. He's, lear he's discovering who his father is. He's, he's kind of piecing together what that missing part of him that was missing in the first film. Rocket is going through the emotional journey and trying to learn how to be a team player. Drax the Destroyer. I like his, I like what they did with him in this character. Uh, in the first movie, he didn't get metaphors. And he, a lot of times, they would joke about something and it would just kind of go over his head as he quotes it in the film. He's like, nothing goes over my head. I would, my reflexes are fast. I would catch it. Um, in this film, I like the fact that they're actually, he's actually made an attempt to kind of understand humor. But he still doesn't. That's kind of the joke of this thing. A lot of the, the, the recurring jokes with Drax the Destroyer is that he's laughing at things that really aren't all that funny. Or he's laughing at something that uh, shouldn't be funny. And that's funny. It's funny when somebody laughs at something that's not funny, surprisingly enough. Who knew? Um, once again, Drax the Destroyer is easily the most funniest part. He is this film's secret weapon. He really is. Like, his character is kind of what makes these movies what they are. And, it, and part of that goes to the performance by Dave Bautista. Um, I never thought Dave Bautista would be an actor who would pull a role like this off, but he f***ing did it. One of the things that, again, I think this film did better than the first one was Gamora. I think Gamora kind of got sidelined in the first one. She was just kind of the uh, the straight man to everybody's Joker. In this film, they do do a little bit more with her, and they ex and the film explores her relationship with Nebula a lot more. And it's some good stuff. It's some really good stuff. I do think, however, that they could have explored her a little more. Um, once again, she's kind of given the sideline, not as much in the first film, but... I don't know, it's just one of those things where like, I kind of want to see more of her character. I don't feel like I'm getting enough of her, I guess, in a sense. So yeah, this is, um, this is a really big, uh, uh, big film in terms of like the casting and stuff like that. Um, and it's kind of a miracle that every single person, uh, doesn't feel weak or underdeveloped. And there's a lot of uh, celebrities in this. There's a there's some cool cameos. Um, Sylvester Stallone is in this, and honestly, the the end of the film kind of foreshadows that he's gonna have his own uh, team, uh, his own kind of Guardians of the Galaxy with uh, with Ving Rhames and Miley Cyrus and Michelle Yeoh and Michael Rosenbaum. And I really want to see that movie. Uh, if Marvel get get on it, that movie look. I will. I will. I'm throwing my money at the screen. Where? Give me that movie. That cost alone is worth seeing that movie for. The soundtrack in this movie. Okay. The soundtrack was a huge part of the first film. Um, in a very important part of the first film. This film soundtrack, personally, I didn't like as much as the first one. I don't know, it's just something about these, uh, these song choices. They, there wasn't as very memorable uh, songs in this one. There's a lot of good scenes, like there's a, a great scene where Rocket is taking down Ravagers and it's set to a, a great song. But I don't know, it's just, uh, I liked... I, I guess it just comes down to a personal preference that I like the the songs in the first one better. Um, not, not that there's anything wrong with the songs that they picked. I was kind of worried that this film wouldn't have the emotional impact of the first film. Because the, emo the first film was a very emotional film. There's some real big tearjerkers in, in that first movie. Um, especially with Peter Quill and his mom. In this film, the entire film was kind of go going, and all I could think of to myself was, yeah, this is fun, and this is entertaining, but it doesn't have that emotional scene that I really liked from the first film. 
And at first I was going to count that as a negative. I was going to say that like it didn't really have that emotional impact on me that the first film did. But then we had that final scene. We had that final scene, which I will not spoil for you guys because it's definitely worth seeing in the theater. Um, but let me just say that that final scene, it got me. It got me right, it got me right there, right in the heart. It, damn you, James Gunn, damn you for making me cry again, again. Damn you for making me feel emotions and shit. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I wrote about the film. Honestly, I don't understand why people don't like this film. I think it did everything that the original did. It did it just as good. And in some ways it actually upped up the... It, it, it took what the original did well and upped the ante. I, I, I felt emotions. I liked these characters. It was funny. It was so funny. It's beautiful to look at. It's a great film. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the film. I hope you liked it. Um, if you did, hit that like button. Uh, subscribe to my channel to see more videos. Uh, I release a new video every Friday. And um, yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.